Well, hello everybody, good evening, and welcome to a special edition of Andrelzic Amusement Academy. Today we are going to be looking at 4D coasters. Um, this came about because the uh, Dirklink monthly coaster competition, or contest, I suppose, is uh, just announced for today, uh, for the month of December, is a multi-dimension coaster. So I thought, why don't we go ahead and look at uh, what counts as a 4D coaster and what exists out there in real life and then talk about how those translate to the game. So um, here we have our multi-dimension coaster, which I think is one of those ones that uh, you don't really see a whole lot of. Um, for, for one, if you're playing for stats, they're tough on stats. For a second, they're um, a little bit limited in what you can build with, um, somewhat surprisingly so, but you know, there's not quite as much as you can do with them as you might be able to in real life. So that's a little bit of a, a challenge. And then see the seat rotation thing is just a little gross and, and annoying. So it's not it's it's not surprising that you don't see a whole lot of these in the game. But, you know, they're they're interesting kind of fun rides. I thought we'd start by uh going back in time a little bit and taking a look at a uh, coaster that I did in 2007, so we're talking 13 years ago. Uh, this won me an NE design on New Element back in the day. Uh, this is Blizzard. This is a uh, not super realistic uh, multi-dimension coaster, as the game calls it. But, um, <clears throat> you know, for the time I thought it was alright and uh, didn't do too bad. And I do still like the layout a fair amount, even though the theming is lackluster at best. But this kind of gives you an idea of what you can do in the game. You'll notice you can do diagonals, you can do bank corners, helixes, and <clears throat> all sorts of stuff like that. So we take this, and we're going to translate this up to modern day. This is uh, Silver Lake Amusement Park by Mavericks, which was uh, just released uh, on New Element. And this has what I would consider to be probably the best 4D coaster done in the game thus far. Uh, you can see it right here. So uh, this is uh, Xsanity, uh, which he has as an uh, SNS built in 2008. So you can see that it's a pretty substantially tall ride. And uh, does a lot to kind of draw out the uh, the drops and everything. But <clears throat> we'll watch this one, and then we'll go take a look at RCDB and and see what exactly constitutes some of these. Uh, this is a pretty darn realistic layout, and the supports are incredible. Uh, very very well done. One of the things that you have to pay attention to on this kind of a coaster is just how beefy the supports are, because these trains are heavy. The track is heavy. The trains are heavy. Just in general. They are very hefty. So it's a pretty fast ride. Be a little too fast in some spots, but that's part of it, I think. This element right here is called a raven turn. And roll into the brakes. <laughs> Yeah, the no custom scenery uh, is going to be a fun time with this. Enjoy it, your wooden post fence spam. Uh, but anyway, I think Mavericks did a really great job here, and this is a, this is a great example of what can be done uh, with this in the game. All right, <clears throat> so let's go back and take a uh, get our first one pulled up, and then we'll go back to the database. All right, so... What constitutes a 4D coaster? So, uh, fourth dimension, as it was coined kind of initially, is a coaster that has um, seat rotation that's kind of independent of the track. Now, there's kind of two forms of this. There's controlled and there's free spin. Um, controlled is the one that we most think of as kind of your common 4D coaster. So that's the one that Arrow invented with X2, which we'll look at here first. And then uh, subsequently, there were two more by SNS who bought Arrow. Um, there are also some um, free spinning varieties that are constituted as a fourth dimension or multi dimension coaster. Um, so that would be 
um, the uh, Intamin Zaxpin, or uh, what was offered as the Ball Coaster at one point. And um, there's the SNS um, free spin variety also. Uh, is the DKMP supposed to be a specific manufacturer? I don't believe it is, um, but I also haven't fully checked the rules, to be honest. Um, <clears throat> so I think this one kind of opens it up for a couple of different things. But so let's uh, let's start out with the controlled spin. So this is X2, um, which began as X, a lovely pink and yellow bright uh, creation here in uh, 2000. Or 2002 2002 so this was one of uh, aerodynamics last uh, coasters and it's um, pretty spectacular uh, this is six Flags magic mountain um, it was also spectacular in just how much work they had to do to it um, so like I said the seats were a controlled rotation um, and let me find a closer shot of the track here okay so you can see it here actually this is a pretty good shot so the wheels that are running on the yellow rails here those are the running wheels so those actually run the coaster along the track and those support the chassis and everything else the pink rails on the on either side have these two little uh, uh wheel sets on them with the piston in between uh these rotate or, or kind of run alongside the yellow um rails here and adjust their height in a relative um, distance kind of up and down compared to the yellow rails the yellow rails um, they kind of fixed for the whole ride and the pink rails um, kind of adjust their height in um, comparison to those yellow rails and those roll a rack and pinion which actually rotates the seats so that's what causes the seat rotation um, I had a photo here. Uh, so this is X2. This is, uh, after, uh, X got relaunched in, um, in, uh, let's see, 2007, I think 2008 is when it got relaunched. It got new trains, which were lighter. Um, it's a little more visible kind of what's going on. You can still see those ones that were on the side rail here. And, uh, this, I know big bar here which you can see on all the different ones this is the racked thing which goes up and down and that actually rotates the seats there's a gear here that runs up and down this thing as these rails move up and down in relation to the track itself so that's what actually causes the rotation here it's not a uh, computer controlled thing it's purely mechanical which i think is really interesting um, so it is a purely uh, mechanically driven deal so like I said, uh, X2 got, or X got relaunched in 2008 as X2 with uh, new trains, which were lighter, um, and it also got repainted. You had some fire effects, some onboard audio, and uh, some other fun stuff like that. Um, oh, you can't see the cursor? No. Well, hopefully you saw the vertical bits. You can kind of see the, the vertical bits here in the middle on the, uh, the purple. Actually, you can't see the cursor. I can see it on my window capture but regardless um <clears throat> so this was a kind of maintenance nightmare for the park initially and and some of the ensuing work that uh, arrow had to do is uh, a lot of what contributed to them eventually going out of business so there was a lot of a lot of issues with this they had to come back and re-strengthen add some supports and do a fair bit just because the coaster was so heavy um, so let's take a look. Let's see if there is a Booster Force video here. All right. Let's go on board with our friends over at Coaster Force for this ad. Thanks, Google TV. All right. X2. So I do encourage you, if you uh, get a chance, to actually watch this video with sound because the uh, audio on the lift hill I think is really, really good. Um, it's kind of stupid, maybe a little bit, but like it's it's got a good kind of mashup of different stuff. Um, you'll notice too that you start by going backwards and also facing up towards the sky. Um, it rotates a little bit on the way out. The harnesses on this are. Uh, you kind of sit on a bicycle seat and then you pull um, 
kind of a loop of harness uh, inwards on either side, and it buckles in the middle. So it, it actually feels a little bit open in some cases, but it's uh, it holds you in rel relatively well, um, despite the amount of turns and flips and things you're going to do uh, on the layout. Um, I will say this is probably probably the wildest of coaster types that I've ridden, and they are really impressive. Um, X2 on the outside seats is pretty brutal also, it's pretty darn rough. Um, interior seats are a little bit better. Uh, and there you can actually see it for just a little bit. You can see the gearing on the, the rack. So here we come off of the off of the lift hill. And the first thing we're going to do is a little dip that will rotate the seats so they're facing straight down. So here we come off of the drop here, and now we're going to be facing straight down. But before we get to the bottom, we're going to flip onto our back, which transfers the forces onto your back. And you'll climb up and do sort of a Superman forward flying before you do a backflip here. And then this is a luge section where you're kind of sitting um, almost like an inverted coaster on almost a little bit on your back. We're going to do a half rotation here with another half rotation of the seats, get you facing backwards now. Uh, go up into the second raven turn element here. So that's a flip and then also a kind of half loop element. And then we're going to have one more half rotation, half roll. And that will put us into the brakes. So it's a little hard to see what all is going on in there, but uh, that's you know the general idea of what uh, what this layout is all about. So this ha uh, was kind of the first bit, and this is a pretty big coaster: 175 feet tall, 215 foot first drop, uh, 76 miles an hour. Pretty substantially tall, big ride, um, but. It got expanded even taller the uh, next time around. So in 2006, Fujiku Highland opened uh, Ajaneka. Uh, this was uh, the one of the tallest coasters in the world at the time. Um, 250 feet tall, 78 miles an hour. Um, kind of sort of a similar layout to X2. Uh, it has two raven turns. It has the uh, little dip here before the first drop. It has the uh, vertical bit on the first drop. And... Uh, they uh, added some extra kind of features here. So there's this overbanked corner on the side here. You can see that's the smaller Raven turn. And let me see if they have a shot of. So you can kind of see it here, the element here in the middle where the train is on. This is called a full full, which is a full track rotation and a full seat rotation. So the seats makes a, make a full spin and the track makes a full kind of zero G roll essentially. Uh, it is a really crazy wild inversion and was a lot of fun. This was my favorite ride at Fuji Q and one of my favorite rides in Japan. So really, really good coaster. Um, it is kind of insane that these coasters exist. I mean, they, they're crazy expensive, which is why there's only three. Um, and they are uh, probably main and nightmares, I would say. And not always the most reliable, although I think they've gotten a little bit better, um, the changes that s, &S have made. Um, but it's pretty impressive. Um, and it's it's hard to tell kind of here looking at it that this thing is 250 feet tall, but it is substantially tall. Um, very impressive. So it happened one more time, one more time over uh, in China this time. Uh, this is Dinoconda at China Dinosaurs Park, which is... Um, Pretty much the same layout as the uh, as Ajanica was, so a similar similar overall design had that overbank here um, has kind of the same typical elements, a little bit of variation and change here and there. You can see the shaping is a little bit odd in some of these bits. This is the most smooth looking uh, corner here. They are still, I mean, Ajanica was pretty rough, uh, so not totally surprising if that was. Uh, that was the case, but anyway, let's um let's go have a look and jump back into the game, and then we'll go look at the variants. We're not going to build any in the game, but we'll we'll take a look at kind of what's there. All right, so let's uh have a look here and see. So a multi-dimension roller coaster is what we want. Basically, a full full is a zero g roll where the seats do a full rotation also. All right, so we'll start 
Well, kind of sort of close to the ground. It doesn't have to be close at all. Uh, train length. So typically you're going to go for five or six cars. You could probably go up to get away with seven. Um, remember these are heavy, so the intention uh, the, for the most part is to lower the weight as much as possible. So I'm going to stick with five on this one. Uh, I don't know if they float. I want to say it was backwards. I don't remember. You'll have to watch a POV of it and see um, see if it was, but I want to say it was backwards. It's kind of a blur when you're on the ride, to be honest. All right, so actually let's just down one. Down just a little bit. So one note as you consider how to build these guys. Um, I would suggest that you consider the ride, even though it fits on one tile here, I would consider it as um, two tiles taking a half from each side. So I would kind of consider the overall size of these trains kind of this size. And uh, hey, AJ, welcome in. Um, just because it's going to look a little nicer uh, and it's going to look like it more accommodates the train size. Because uh, these trains are wide, you can kind of see right here how big they are. And granted, they do, um, according to the game, fit in a one across tile, but they look a little larger than that. So I would suggest you give at least one on either side. You could give it a full three, but uh, it's probably a little easier just to give it a one plus a half on either end. So we'll do a little dip out of the station before we get to our lift hill. Um, and we'll kind of pick up our lift hill here. These are big rides, so don't be afraid to stretch things out a little bit. This is the only ride in game that uh, offers a built-in catwalk, which is a little bit odd, but part of it. All right, so we're going to we probably cap it out a little bit less than that. You can go huge if you want. You can see on Mavericks as it was a big, big ride. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is um, build our little kind of dip here. And what we want this to do is just kind of barely cruise over the second part of this. So This might be a little bit fast over top, but not too bad. There it is, just good. So we want to see it pause a little bit. So we like this dip here because we're, we're going to get them facing down onto the ground before we um before we pull it out at the bottom so we're gonna end up doing something like that then the first thing is this uh, what we call a raven turn And I suggest where possible, you don't have the large flat too steep element here. Um, I suggest wherever possible stretching things out uh, a little bit. So that's what we're going to do here. Um, I'm going to see how we look with one vertical in there. So this ride can run above track and below track. And you can have diagonals. All right, so let's see how we're doing on this hill. We are, I would say, a little bit slow there, so we're going to actually go ahead and move this out. And actually what I want to do, and I'll give this one more, because I kind of want that vertical piece on there. Okay. 
Actually, let's uh, keep this against the ground and we can call this like a trench of some kind because actually X2 has a trench there and I think it's a pretty effective, effective element. All right, so that cruises through there pretty well. And now we can get on with ourselves. Uh, the one challenge with the Raven turn element, which is basically this half loop, um, is that you don't get any offset, like the large half loop on the um, B&M Hyper or Twister coasters, for example. So you, you really have to either do an S-Bend, which I think looks a little funky, or go diagonal with it, which is what we're doing here. Um, and then we can kind of level this out a little bit and do a something like this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're counting how we go through. These layouts are not long. Uh, they're, they're, I suppose, long by nature of they've got a pretty substantial track height, so they are going to be reasonably long, but not long in the sense of they're going to kind of go on forever, so you don't need a 6,000 foot long multi-dimension coaster. A, parks couldn't afford it, and B, I'm not sure the guests could take it. Okay. We're not worrying about seat um, rotation kind of at all at this point. <clears throat> <laughs> Chili could probably afford it. Um, if you wanted to introduce a diving or climbing corner, you probably could. So, like, I would think you could probably come in here um, and say, do something like this if you wanted. But I also um, I don't think the rides can... Uh, run this your trains are going to glitch <clears throat> Which they will so it depends what your trade-off is do you mind the trains glitching or do you want to be able to do that? Uh, that kind of element so up to you entirely All right, so we're gonna have this as kind of a faster corner so We do have a helix piece when the track is facing upwards or when the train's on top of the track, but we don't have a helix piece underneath the track. Just something to keep in mind as um, as you look at uh, kind of what's going on here. Okay. This is a bit of a faster element here. Let's see where we are right now. So the idea as far as seat rotation goes is everybody's going to face the ground here, roll onto their back, and then kind of uh, elevate while facing outwards. Uh, we'll kind of do a little bit of a flying position here. We'll do a full rotation there. And be on their uh, kind of on feet forward right there. And then we'll continue on through the rest of this. Let's go ahead at the same time now and put in our brakes. Um, so these do have three trains um, just because of the loading process and everything else. They're they're not efficient with three trains, by any means. Um, <clears throat> X2 is built with an unload station, um, so that helps a little bit. But it's still, still a little bit, um, well, not a little bit, a lot bit slow. Um, so it was definitely a, uh, a challenge there, for sure. All right. Um, so then we'll go through here and have ourselves a... Our inline twist. And then we're going to get up to uh, another of these Raven turns. We're actually a little bit too, uh, too low right there. So competition wise, if you're thinking about this as far as the DK contest goes, this kind of a layout isn't going to win you any prizes. This is a pretty standard stock layout, so I think you're going to be interested in trying to find some creativity within the layout. Um, so just a consideration as, as far as all that goes, let's try and find a little bit of interest uh, throughout. 
Right. For me, this is a little bit quick, so we're going to pull up a little bit before we finish off. It's me to 20, so we'll back off just a little bit. What we want to do is finish this. On our backs. Kind of right into the brakes. Now these brakes do have typically are inclined a little bit. But the inclination is such that you're really not going to see it in um, in the game. So um, you really aren't going to see a whole heck of a lot of um, change there. So it's might as well just leave it flat. That's a pretty substantially long break run too. Um, uh, it's just basically Eugenica, uh, more or less. Yeah, it's it's got a similar layout to it. Um, this is sort of the standard layout of all of these. Um, Arrow did offer a couple of other layouts uh, within brochures and things, um, but and, and SNS did too. You can still actually see these on the SNS website, but all the layout examples are pretty much the same sort of thing, which is essentially a double out and back, and that's pretty much it. So you can definitely do a more custom design that has probably some more interesting features to it. <clears throat> And maybe we do that at, at some point here. Um, so I'm not going to go through and do the whole seat rotation just because it's for the sake of time. I don't really want to go through all of that, but just kind of talking through the way seat rotation works. And let's get ourselves a couple of trains here. Excuse me. Brakes. Backward. Brakes. ourselves higher brakes we will radiate down into right well um you know once we're done here i can see about taking a stab at something a little more Creative, perhaps, and see what we can do. All right, so let's uh, make these seats nice and bright so they are easy to see as we go through a lot of these elements. So, when you look at any of these track elements, you have a, a degree percentage here. So, this is the uh, track rotation uh, or seat rotation. In relation to the track so you'll notice it goes forwards up to 300 or 495 and it goes backwards to 180 so we want to increase those um, rotations here as we get up to this location so let's uh, give ourselves a simulation What we're going to try and do here is start down here and work our way up. Now, it doesn't carry across when you're building, when you're doing it like this. If you build it from the beginning, uh, it will carry across. Start right, right here. 45, and then we'll go 90 to the track. So you can see how the seats rotate a little bit. Now, granted, it's a little tough to follow. And this is one of those things that I, I think is not quite not quite the best on, on these is how how the seats rotate. So it's really kind of tough to see on uh, these rides.
probably the lift hill is your best bet. And you really, what you don't typically want to do is kind of what I'm doing here, just to show you how they move, um, is change it a whole bunch all at once. You really want to ease into it and ease out of it. So the idea with seat rotation is you want to consider body position and you want to consider kind of where it is on the layout. You don't want to be landing people on their heads as you're pulling out of an element. So you don't want to shove people head first down this drop and then pull out while their head is still down, you know, facing downwards. Um, you'll notice on the real ones, so they rotate you face first here, but before you pull out and put all that pressure on your chest, you flip to your back, and then the pressure is on your back and dissipated. Um, then you can add the flying position through some of these elements here, uh, and then this kind of full rotation uh, here, and then you also have the feet first um, of this other side. So the cool thing about it is you can really do a lot of different stuff. You don't always have to be rotating and that's one of the key things is you, you don't have to get in here and just do constant movement the entire time. I mean I would think for me from kind of this position here all the way over to here that would all be feet first for me and from up here all the way down to here that's all flying position for me and from that flying position basically I'm going to pull into a full full 360 inversion here that ends with feet forward. So consider kind of how those rotations flow into each of the other ones. But I don't think you need to look that closely at it again, just because it's so difficult to even see the seat rotations just as you're viewing the, the parks. Um, as long as you have a little bit of rotation in there just for the visual, that's really what you're looking for. All right, so that is sort of our, our standard layout. and. We'll try a little bit more. Uh, they put the feet forward. It's just another design element. It's basically kind of like a luge. So you're almost on your back in that section as you go around the corner um, before it drops into the next thing and gets you flipping around again. That's kind of a neat, neat position. Actually, I kind of liked that um, that position specifically just because I had spent the entire rest of the ride either going backwards on my back, on my face first, whatever that may be. So I thought that was kind of clever. All right, so I did say that there were other 4D coaster types, and there are. Um, I don't really expect to see these in, in the DK competition, but just for interest and kind of what is out there. Um, Intamin offers a coaster called the Zack Spin. Um, there's also a variety called the Ball Coaster, um, which is essentially an LSM launched version of the uh, Zack Spin. So this was the very first Zaxpin, a little tiny one here in Lindenmaki Park in uh, Finland. Uh, there was another one of these in uh, Terra Mitica in um, Spain. And it's just this little layout. This is kind of all it is. And the seats uh, can free rotate um, on uh, either side. And they kind of go down this vertical uh, stacked track. They don't do corners. Um, it's all kind of stacked in one little spot like this. Now they did increase size after a little while to this kind of a size. This is uh, insane at Grunoland, um, and this was also done again at Green Lantern at Six Flags Magic Mountain. Um, now headed to La Ronde, uh next year. So these are not terribly well regarded, although I do hear some decent things about this one. Uh, I thought Green Lantern at Magic Mountain was one of the worst coasters I've ever ridden. So uh, you know, take it take it as you will. Um, but this does exist. It's also very difficult to make an RCT, um, but I shouldn't say impossible to make. So let's uh, go take a look at this. Uh, anything in particular you recommend uh, avoiding in terms of layout? Um, let me come back to that because I think we can answer that a little bit. So this is Six Flags Worlds of Discovery. This is a recent park this year by uh, Pacific Coaster and uh, Nin. Um, on new element. So here is a uh, hacked version of the uh, Zach Spin layout. So you can see the impulse track is there for show, and there is a different track underneath of it. Uh, actually, done pretty well. In my opinion, this is the best one that we've seen in the game, uh, and does match the layout pretty well, actually. 
Um, you could also shoestring this, do some breaks on the uh, curve here, but uh, either way, uh, you can definitely do a lot with it. So pretty pretty cool to see. And we just crashed the game. Cool. All right, so let's uh, as I restart our CT, let's go back to this. All right. Anyway. So this is the last one. Uh, this is the SNS version of the uh, Zach Spin uh, by Intamin. Uh, and this is kind of the one that's a little better known, I think, uh, just because there's a lot more of them. If we go back to uh, the list of fourth dimension coasters, there's 14 in total. Um, SNS, 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 um, SNS, 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 SNS. SNS and another SNS. So they're they're all pretty well, you know, covered in, in that regard. Now I realize that the uh intimates aren't listed here a little bit oddly. Um but these are um, a little bit different. So these have two car trains here, kind of tandem trains, uh, running on this nice big box track. Uh RMC actually makes this track for SNS, uh, if it looks familiar. Um so these are interesting rides. If you look at this photo, you can see the uh, brake fins up here. So the uh, fins here are um, are what cause the the seat rotation. So there's on these layouts, there's two possible rotations. There's a um, I forget what they call it. There's a potential rotation and a um, confirmed inversion, I guess. I don't, there, there's, essentially there's brake fins in which they know you're gonna do a full rotation and there's other ones where you may do it if the weighting is, is just right on your train or you may not. So it's kind of interesting. It makes the ride a little bit more variable. And one of the things you'll notice here is that there's only a fin on the left-hand side here. So only the, the left-hand seats are gonna do that rotation. You'll notice too that on uh, the top one, this one, there's only one on the left-hand side up here. So you know, left-hand side going out, I guess the other side coming back. Um, so pretty interesting in that regard, um, which means the seats on either side provide a different experience. There, are, there is also the ability to vary uh, kind of how many and where these things are. So um, between different ones of these, even though the same layout, they can be different ride experiences. I've done. Four of these now and all four were very different ride experiences uh, i can't say i'm the biggest fan of these to be honest i find them to be you know okay as far as uh ride experience goes hey, how are you doing um i feel like um that they're okay but i also feel like if it's uh if it's done poorly you um you get a pretty bad whiplash. Um, it's uh, it's it's not not so good in in my opinion because you do get a kind of confirmed roll off the top here, and then this next one here is a possible roll. And if you do the if you do the roll, it's fine. If you don't do the roll, you kind of get whipped back in the other direction, and I don't really feel like it's a great uh, great ride experience. But you know, nonetheless. There's actually a couple of these. Um, so there's um, the 110 version, which is kind of the standard one. There's also one that's going in over here in China, which has a little bit different layout. It almost looks like all the elements are a little bit flatter. Um, and then there's also at uh, Adventureland in Iowa, uh, Dragon Slayer, which I don't have a photo of right here. It's a smaller version, um, just by a little bit uh, on the ride. So um, this is even harder to make in the game than the other one is. So uh, I don't don't blame folks for not doing that one. I probably wouldn't recommend it either. Um, perhaps it will be a custom ride in the future, but I think that's a new save format, new pieces, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so let's go back to the game and we'll wrap this up with um, a couple thoughts here. Um, AJ had asked, um, what is, or no, Cactus had asked, what would we recommend to um, avoid in terms of layout. 
So the first thing that I would say on that one is to avoid using the vertical piece on anything but the first drop and any Raven turn. Like you really don't want to have a kind of hill here in the middle that has a vertical climb and then a vertical downward section. I'd say avoid a ton of fast corners and fast inversions. Like you want to, and this is typical of most coasters, is you want your inversions to have a little bit of a slowdown. So you want this roll to be up high. And um, you want the uh, all these rolls to be up high. Kind of the exception is this last one, which I wish you could make these stretched a little bit further because um, X2 has this one. And then also um, um, Asian Aka and Dino Conda have it, but it's all very stretched out. So it looks a little fast here. It looks a little stupid. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend that. Um, you could launch it if you want to. I don't see why not. I mean, SNS would probably do that if you asked. You had enough money. Um, not that I think any park is going to do that. I think that if we do see any more of these these size multi-dimension coasters, I think you're going to see them in China because that's about the only place that I could see affording it. Um off the rain and then we can try one more and see if we can make it a little more interesting all right so let's uh do a little bit of a different layout perhaps <laughs> launched x There was a uh, there was a 4D plant on a couple of different instances. Uh, I don't know if anybody remembers. Um, oh, thanks for uh, stopping by though. Um, I'll uh, I'll post the stream on YouTube when I'm done also, and I'll have it linked in the Discord's uh, for anybody who wants to see it then. Um, but if if anybody remembers Orlando Thrill Park, which uh, was a thing back in uh, the uh, Ooh, five ten years ago Maybe five years ago it was it was a proposal for a park down here in orlando that had a bunch of like huge huge rides um in it including like a uh, top throw dragster type ride and um it was it was substantial uh but there was a 4d coaster in there it didn't happen of course uh but it was pretty cool but like I said, I don't really expect any more of these to show up, and they do. I expect it at a place that could afford them, like China. All right. So we're going to start this one sort of the same way as we started the other ones, just because I think it is a good turnaround element. I have no idea why it's called a Raven Turn. It was something that uh, Magic Mountain coined kind of from the beginning. Um, and it was just kind of one of those things that stuck. It's kind of the same way as... And granted, I don't know if that was an Arrow thing. Because um, Arrow did refer to them as Raven Turns. Or I don't know if it was a park thing. Um, but it, it's kind of like when parks name inversions and they stick around. Like the Norwegian Loop or the Jojo Roll or things like that. Um, always a little bit odd as far as those go, um, but um, parks. It's the it's the one little bit of fun the parks can have sometimes. I think so. I can't uh, fault them too hard for it. I think if you were to do anything with layout, that you're going to want to use diagonal to your advantage. <laughs> I put in a bid to name the elements that I did on... Uh, 
on Icebreaker, but you know, nobody wanted to hear that. I could do this if we wanted. It's a little bit, a little bit silly. Uh, for for one, the uh, the Helix piece is definitely not clearance friendly uh, in real life if you look at it, but it is kind of a neat neat thing. A little bit slow off of that Raven turn. Ooh, too fast through there anyways. Yeah, I would agree with you there. Uh, I would much rather have seen the uh, helix be just a little bit bigger. All right. Nothing to say we can't have a you know, slightly faster helix, or slightly faster cornering. Um, you could definitely do some pretty cool stuff with it. I think I'm kind of just barely making it over there. I kind of want to get it so the ride sort of just skirts its way over. I'm guessing if I put in the... No, it works. Okay. You can kind of go way over. I wonder if it works in the other direction. It does. Kind of like that twist. Or being at least a little bit more creative as far as the overall shaping of the layout goes. Um, you definitely have... Uh, a little bit of freedom here. I, I think for me, one of the biggest things that is, um, I think one of the biggest things that's a challenge with this ride is you don't have sloped corners. Um, I think that adds a lot of character to rides. Um, is it fine to let a train crawl through? This is probably a little bit slow. Um, I'd like it to be a little bit faster. That said, I, I don't think it's you know inconceivable that it would be like that. Um, train or guest weight will certainly help it um, overall, but not uh, not too too bad. Let's see how we're looking so far. Not not too bad overall here. Let's. Uh... Figure out how we want to get this to an end point. This turn might end up being a little bit slow, to be honest. What I was hoping to do is get those underneath. One more raven turned down. If we have this the height for it, we'll see. It might be a little too ambitious. Also leaves a lot of speed on the table, which I never quite like to do, but.
Hey, Hydro. Thanks for stopping by. We're, we're nearly wrapping up here, but I want to finish this layout. Yeah, the DK contest this month is a 4D coaster, so we are looking at 4D coasters. So let's do another set of brakes here. You can always do the uh, two raven turns connected with another corner in the middle and get yourself a cobra roll of sorts. But here's a consideration for a slightly less traditional layout. Using some diagonals, using some crossovers, having a couple of interesting elements to it. One of the things that I, you know, looking at it now, we have... Three Raven turns that all do the same thing. Start from the bottom and go up. Um, but you could also come downwards too. Guessing how many feet? Yeah, why not? Take a guess. This is not gonna. We're not gonna come anywhere close to our uh, six thousand feet from last time. But uh, how many? Uh, how long is the coaster? We have until this train gets home to. Uh, Yes, we are playing Price is Right style, so the uh, closest without going over on track length is the winner. Got 3,000 so far. 1221, which I'm feeling is maybe a little bit short. 1001, Zara with the snipe. We're gonna count your second one, Zara. So you'll have three hundred. All right, what's it gonna be? And twenty five hundred from Barnid coming in at the moment, last minute. It is three thousand three fifty three. So that means Zara's gonna take it, I think, unless anybody else. Got it, and I missed it. There you go. Well done. It was actually longer than I expected, to be honest. Um, the height certainly played a role there. Um, give it our standard 40 coaster color scheme. Surely you can be more creative with color schemes, because there's only three <laughs> color schemes, and they're all very bland. So definitely... Do something else, do something interesting. Um, so anyway, we have uh, our kind of very traditional 4D coaster here. And we have the um, a little bit more out there, although not unrealistic by any means, I would say. Um, something custom, I suppose. But, you know, not not too bad. Uh, but that's uh, that's all we've got for today. So short stream. Uh, we're coming in just under an hour, but um, hopefully that gave you a little bit of an insight to the um, 4D coasters and kind of what is out there as far as these go. Um, I will post this on YouTube here uh, shortly, and I'll link that for everybody who wants to see it. And then if you um, have any questions, feel free to reach out to me, and I'm happy to take a look at layouts and all that kind of fun stuff. If uh, anybody wants to throw those by me, and I'll give you a critique. But, um, yeah, so uh, definitely a unique type of coaster, so I'm interested to see what the uh, entries will uh, will have. And if you're building a park just on your own, I consider including one of these, because I think they are fun fun rides that uh, deserve uh, some more attention, even though they're crazy expensive and very wild. So, until next time, thank you guys very much for watching, and have a good night.